Ready? Uh oh. I call to order the City of Buellton's Planning Commission for Thursday, January 20th, 2022. And I will go ahead and read the pledge since I'm here and not on Zoom. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for the one nation under God, indivisible, justice for all. Roll call. Commissioner Liggett. Here. Here. <laughs> Commissioner Mer or Vice Chair Mercado. Here. Commissioner Sarkia. Here. Commissioner Blockdike. Here. Chair Hamill. Here. No reordering of the agenda. No presentations. Approval of minutes from our last commission meeting from January 6th. Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion to approve the regular planning commission meeting of January 6th, 2022. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, public comments. This is where members of the public can comment on anything that's not on the agenda. And um, do we have that number they can reach us at? I think that information is also shared on our agenda packet mm -hmm. too for any members of the public. That's not the right one. Oh. Not the one for 120. Oh. Okay. There we go. All right, here we go. Okay. And also to remind anyone listening in from the public and members of the commission and everyone else, we are an in-person meeting, but um, we are available by Zoom also and or calling in. Uh, next, consent calendar, none. Continued public hearings, none. New public hearings. Resolution number 22-01. A resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of Buellton, California, approving a conditional use permit 20-CUP-01 for the AT&T Wireless Communications Facility project located at 723 Honda Park Road, assessor parcel number 0993000004 and making findings in support thereof. Assistant Planner Kiara, are you ready for us? I am. Uh, good evening, Chair Hamill and Planning Commissioners. Tonight uh, we have the public hearing for a conditional use permit for uh, to allow an AT&T wireless communications facility to be built on the city's res water reservoir site at 723 Hanada Park Road. There we go. You can just move to the next slide. <clears throat> Okay, so the vicinity map show, um, you can see there the project site is the lease area as well, 960 square feet on that southeast portion of the water reservoir site. And that's on the hill above Paws Park and then um, above the multifamily homes on Central Avenue. So that site is about um, 100 feet above on the hillside and then 300 feet away from the nearest residences. And next, these are the propagation maps. Um, so for radio signals, <clears throat> what they show is um, where there's sufficient outdoor signal in the pink color and then where there is sufficient in, sig um, in vehicle signal in the yellow and then sufficient indoor signal is shown in green. So you can see before the project, um, AT&T's radio frequency engineers have identified a significant gap in their coverage for AT&T service, and that's mostly in the um, the in-vehicle and indoor uh, coverage. And so then the after project map shows that the majority of the city would receive after the project is built substantial coverage for um, in-vehicle and indoors. Kara, sorry to interrupt. I'm not sure. seeing this, this the slides change on my Zoom. I don't know if Bob or anyone else is. Is it? <clears throat> yeah. I see the first sheet, and that's about it. I don't. I don't see the the. 
the PowerPoint's rolling through. Well, let me here. I will stop sharing and see if reloading helps. Them. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sorry for the interruption. Oh, yeah, no, that's kind of, that's important. I've had students let me finish a whole lecture without telling me that. I had to redo it. <laughs> I see it now. Okay, great. Perfect. Okay, so we have the yeah before project that I've talked about, the after the project coverage, and then the bottom map just shows the coverage with the standalone site, um, so just the project by itself. Um, so due to the city's height limits, uh, the water reservoir site with its high elevation and its lease availability, it was really found to be uh, by AT&T the only suitable site for the project in the city. So if a wireless carrier sufficiently demonstrates that there is a significant coverage gap and the proposal is the least intrusive alternative to remedy that gap and complies with FCC regulations, the proposal must be approved per the Federal Telecommunications Act. So building new uh, cell towers does require authorization and licensing by FCC and thereby compliance with limits set for radio frequency or RF emissions. And then AT&T is also subject to the requirements of the California Public Utilities Commission and the Federal Aviation Administration. And the applicant has stated in the project description that AT&T cell sites do operate well below the FCC limits for safe exposure to RF emissions. And then also in order to be exposed to the maximum RF levels that antennas would emit an individually individually would essentially have to stand um, in the main transmitting beam within a few feet of the antenna for several minutes or longer to be exposed to the max RF emissions um, of the tower. So for public work staff, this is uh, very minimal exposure. Uh, the site's about 40 feet away from the project's water facility and then and public work staff wouldn't need to be anywhere near the project site or cross it in order to um, run our, or access our city facilities. And then again, the nearest residences are at least 300 feet away from the project site too. Okay, so this <clears throat> slide here, we see the, the applicant has entered into a lease agreement with the city as the property owner. Uh, the city council approved that lease agreement last month on December 9th. And the project lease area, again, is 960 square feet, shown in that uh, site plan to the right. The project would be a five or a 4G tower, and any 5G in installation would be required to obtain additional permits um, as necessary. So the antennas would be here disguised in the faux broadleaf tree. And at the Planning Commission preliminary review of the project way back in June 2020, uh, the Planning Commission directed the design of the tree be changed from the eucalyptus to a broadleaf tree to be more compatible with the area, and this has been done. Uh, the lease area is proposed to be surrounded by a six-foot high chain link fence on the west and north sides connecting to the existing chain link fence around the city site uh, on the east and south property lines. And then as far as environmental review, this is a categorical exemption through CEQA uh, class three for small facilities and structures. And this is consistent with what other cities have found. <clears throat> so um, still on that slide, sorry. Uh, just going through the, the site plan and in some more detail, the um, utility cabinets are mounted to the fence to the west of the faux tree. Um, this to the south of the tower, it's a six by six foot steel equipment cabinet. And then to the south of that, we have the diesel backup generator for emergency use. Um, and that, I just wanted to talk, touch on the generator um, for a little bit, because we do have some added conditions for that. Um, just because it's, even though it is for emergency use only, they will be doing um, routine maintenance on it for once a month and it would be run for about five to 15 minutes. So just to mitigate any of the noise, potential noise impacts to the residences, we added uh, conditions of approval that the generator enclosure has to mitigate noise to the maximum extent that's possible. And then that maintenance for the generator and for 
maintenance on the site can only occur within certain daytime hours. Um, next slide. Okay. So that um, you can see here, I don't know if it's too clear, but uh, Hanada Park Road is the um, road where we have the main, the only access road to the site. Yeah, thanks, Andrea. Uh, so this road to access the parcel runs through multiple parcels. Um, electricity to the project is proposed to be connected to one of two power poles that run along this road, and then the line would go through this road as well. So a condition of approval for the project would require that the applicant obtain the access and utility easements through all of the privately owned parcels that the road goes through. Um, so the parcel itself is an interior lot, which means that the setbacks are a little different than what they would typically be for this zone. So it's at least 10 feet setback from all the property lines, and the project does comply with all of uh, the setbacks. And then lastly, um, this condition of approval on co-location capability. So this means that uh, the project would be required to, to um, house potentially if uh, various wireless carriers come in the future wanting to add to the support structure their own antennas, they could do so. Um, this really minimizes the potential need to construct new sites around the city. And just it would house various, could house various wireless um, facilities from different carriers. But th that would also require, of course, city approval and then a separate lease agreement with the city um, for any secondary carriers. Okay, the elevations. Um, the height of the support structure is 35 feet, so that's the faux tree trunk, and that's the maximum allowed height. But the faux branches reach up to 40 feet, although these um, are exempt as antenna and similar architectural features are exempt from the height limit up to 50 feet. And then the branches of the tree start at around 15 feet high. Uh, so you'll see on the elevations the chain link fence proposed around it, and that is an exception to the design guidelines. So it's, chain link fences are typically discouraged. But in this case, um, the alternatives were con alternatives considered such as a solid wall and landscaping weren't really practical in this case. So a solid masonry wall of, would look out of place um, with the existing chain link fence. And then additional landscaping wouldn't be practical either. It would require uh, the city to maintain it and irrigation to be installed. It would also warrant additional maintenance personnel to the site. So staff feels that the allowance of this chain link fence is warranted. Um, that's all I have for this slide. Okay. <clears throat> so the photo simulations we see here are just renderings of the what it would look like um, as installed. This first one is from Paws Park, looking to the northeast. And the next one is looking from Avenue of Flags up on the hill. And go to the third one. And that's on the water reservoir site itself, looking to the southwest. And then the last one is also on the water reservoir site, looking to the southeast. Um, so a condition of approval here, just to further mitigate any um, in visual impacts, is that this project would be required to have antenna socks, as they call them. So meaning the antennas themselves would need to be fitted with faux leaf covers, i.e. the socks, uh, for additional screening to some of the antenna arrays that may not be fully covered, like you can see in this photo simulation, um, within the faux branches. Uh, next slide. So the proposed colors and, colors and materials of the faux broadleaf tree and trunk are here. I also have the physical board just right down there if anybody wants to get up and take a look at it. And next slide for the recommendation um, is that the Planning Commission 
consider the adoption of resolution 22-01 as stated on the slide. And then that is my last slide and I am open for questions as well as Dino, Romeo and Tyler Kent. And then I see they have multiple associates on there. So they are from SmartLink representing AT&T. Thank you. I'll, I'll go, thank you, Kara. Um, I will go through the commissioners. If anybody has any quick questions for Kara, I'll start with our uh, commissioners on Zoom. Commissioner Liggett, do you have questions for Kara? Uh, no, no, thank you. Thank you, Kara. Okay, and Commissioner Blockdike? You're on Zoom. Mute. I mean, you are on Zoom, but you're on <laughs> mute as well. <laughs> Maybe no questions. Okay. Go. Sorry about that. Um, no, I don't have any questions for Kara. Um, okay. I I was around when uh, when when it first came in front of the Planning Commission, and uh, I think I, I was the one that really wanted to have a broadleaf tree. It's not perfect. It's still going to look fake. But it's I'm 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 I'm, I'm I, I will settle for that. You know. So anyway. There's Maybe. not much you can do. Maybe from long distance, it won't look so fake. It'll, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. It's it's hard. It's hard to look at it. <laughs> but but it'll be fine. You're right. We won't pay attention to it. <laughs> it'll fade into the landscape. That's right. All right. Uh, Commissioner Sarkia, anything for Kara? So it'll be far enough away where it shouldn't be too bad, but the community won't even hear it, anything over there, right? Because you, even the generator you've got, yeah, pretty well. it's pretty far away, but yeah. just in case, and be, because it is up on a hilltop, it could uh, have more noise impacts than if it were on the ground. So we put those noise mitigations in to just eliminate any potential noise impacts. I've seen a few of them, but you don't yeah. hear anything. So that's yeah. good. Yeah, and it's only for the emergency generator that's going to be run. Um, and are the access roads uh, gated or, or does the public have access? To they are gated, yeah. So it's private road and uh, gates are at both the entrance to the main road and then the entrance to the city facility as well. Okay. That's all the questions I had. Thank you. Okay. And Vice Chair Mercado. Uh, no questions. Okay. Comment is to just say I think the mitigations that you proposed are well within reason, so I would back it 100%. Okay, and I do not have any questions either, and so I will um, bring our applicant in, uh, Dino, and if you um, if you have anything to add or if you want to introduce your uh, project staff or colleagues or whoever <clears throat> is all on the Zoom with us. Sure, uh, can everyone hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, hi, my name is Dino. I represent SmartLink. Uh, we're an authorized agent of AT&T. Um, here with me, I have my project managers, Alexis Dunlap and Tyler Kent. And we have some associates that um, are new to the team, Renee, uh, John, and Chris. Um, we did have one question. Um, uh, Tyler, did you want to go ahead and ask Kara? Yeah, and Kara, just uh, wanted to say thank you so much for all your, your hard work on this project and uh, of staff. Uh, to get us to this point. Um, I did want to clarify one thing you said early in the presentation um, regarding 5G and other equipment um, on the facility. Uh, at this time, it's not proposed to have um, the, the 5G on it today as it's going to be built. Um, but I know at and is going to want that in the future. Um, that's essentially just a different antenna um, as part of 5G technology. Um, so in the future, if we want to exchange a like for like antenna or other piece of equipment that's part of general maintenance. I just want to clarify that it's okay to swap out antenna as long as we're not increasing the number of antenna or the number of equipment that's there. And that's a question for me. Yeah, for, yeah I guess for, for planning. So if, if AT&T needs to update their, um, their network based on you know, the newest antenna model, and we're going to switch out the antenna um, as it's shown on the drawings currently. 
Um, so if we've got 12 antenna now, we swap out an antenna in the future. I just want to verify that we won't need a new permit for that. But if the scope of work changes, we understand that a new permit would be needed if we're adding additional antenna or another carrier wants to collate, co-locate or the, uh, the scope of work changes um, in a way that that's adding the number of antenna or the number of RU that are on the drawings. I think when it comes to like for like replacement, um, 4G may be different than 5G. Um, the city may consider that at least a land use exemption would be needed for that. But we'd also have to take a look at the FCC regulations or the, the Federal Telecommunications Act to see what is our, um, what the city has jurisdiction over in terms of switching to or adding 5G installations to the site. Okay, so if it was in, if everything was in line as it is today and approved, um, there wouldn't be an issue with um, changing out antennas or um, just doing general maintenance. And um, like, let's say an antenna on RRU fails for whatever reason, it, it goes out. We can switch out the antenna, and then at some point, if we switch over to 5G and it's a 5G antenna, um, that that would be okay because 5G is a pretty broad term when it comes to the technology itself. Yeah, we would need to look at the proposal when it comes through and determine what necessary permits there would be. Okay. Um, so, so let's let's regardless of, of what what type of antenna it is, but we have the, the ability to change out a piece of equipment that goes down, correct? Like for like, yes, that is in the terms of the yeah. lease agreement, but yeah, okay. we are talking about the proposed installation as is proposed in, in the plans today. The 5G installation would be a future project. Correct. Okay. Okay. okay, I think that answers my question. Anything further from the applicants or our team? Doesn't I don't see hands or anything. Okay, um, just a reminder, this is a public hearing, so I will open it up for public comments. Uh, as, as of this time, we don't have anything, Claire. I'll go ahead and just share the screen okay. real quick. But... We'll share the screen for if the public is listening and watching, they can call in or zoom in with questions. We'll do that for a minute. Um, I actually, um, I do have a, a kind of a ending question um, for the applicant. Um, if it gets approved tonight, what is the uh, quote unquote construction installation timeline you're looking at to do the pad and get the antennas up and get the fake foliage up and that? Uh, I can answer that. Uh, so we would still need to obtain our building permits. So that would be anything from a one to three month process from the date that the appeal period is done. Um, so after that, uh, just accounting for some downtime and, and the time to find a general contractor and do the pre-construction meeting with the city and any public works representatives, um, we would expect uh, within one to two months after we obtain the building permit for the, the facility to start construction. And okay. at that point, it would take anywhere from three to six months to complete okay. fully. Okay. So maybe total at the most nine months, maybe? Is that fair? From now or from yeah. Yeah. Well, construction yeah. start? Yeah. 
Too soon to um, I can, yeah, rough, I, roughly, I guess. Uh, we, you never know. There's always hiccups along the road. Um, you never know uh, what right. kind of requirements the city might have or county fire, something that we might not be able to address. Oh, so, sure. um, to keep it safe, I would say nine to 12 months, but uh, okay. realistically, it's about one to two months after we obtain the building permits. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, and I don't think we've heard anything from the public, so I will go ahead and close the public comments. And I will turn it back to the commission. Are there any final comments beginning with Commissioner Liggett? Uh, no, we don't have any comments. Okay. Yeah. And then Commissioner Blockdyke? No comments. Okay. Commissioner Sarkia? No, for me. Thank you. <laughs> and Vice Chair Mercado? Nothing. Okay. And I don't have any additional comments either. So um, is do I have a motion to approve? I'd make the motion to approve resolution number 2201 as stated. And I will second it. Uh, roll call. Vice Chair Mercado. Aye. Chair Hamill. Aye. Commissioner Liggett. Aye. Commissioner Blockdyke. Aye. Commissioner <laughs> Sarkia. Aye, too. Awesome. Thank you uh, to the applicant and. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I appreciate so it. Other business? All right, have a good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Night. You too. Uh, continuing, other business? None. Written communications? None. Planning commissioner comments? Anything from the Zoom peeps? None. <laughs> <laughs> you guys? I have a public, in it, public service announcement. I I only have one question, but I guess I can wait for the planning director's report. Okay. There's a question for you. Okay. Um, we'll see if we have, nope, we're done. Okay, so uh, um, this is just a p quick public service announcement for our valley. Uh, it's, we're in the middle, uh, or just started the San Inez Valley Restaurant Weeks. If you aren't familiar with that, oh. uh, go online. It's Dine SYV, and there's participating restaurants all around the valley, including Buellton, Solving, San Inez, Los Olivos, and Los Alamos. Um, they all have special menus, special pricing. Um, go to that website for that kind of stuff. But uh, just kind of a shout out to support our local wine or wineries. Uh, the tasting rooms are on there too. There's deals at all the local tasting rooms uh, who are on the list. But um, to support our local businesses, our restaurants, and our tasting rooms in these difficult times. And that's all I have. So uh, planning director reports, Director Kiefer. All right, so um, just wanted to let the commission know that we have kicked off our housing element update. We started work on that uh, late December and we are really moving forward uh, full speed ahead with our consultants um, on board there to meet the February 2023 certification deadline. So, Moving, moving ahead on that and making some good progress already, so that's good. Um, secondly, I just wanted to mention um, the um, 518, the story poles that you see out on the avenue there on the northeast corner of 2nd and Avenue. So those story poles are for a proposed mixed-use project called the 518 project, and they are installed in anticipation of a a potential planning commission public hearing sometime in March. So uh, those story, the installation of those story poles has been completed and um, encourage you and anybody interested in taking a look to drive by or walk by and take a look at those story poles. So um, I think that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Okay. Andrea, can I have a question? Sure. Will, will the story poles be up until that meeting in March? That's correct. Mm, that's the requirement. Okay, thank you. I had a question. I had an update on my, because I put it in my cell phone. Uh, the quarterly reports for our horse project on. Okay. The, okay. I was just wondering if that has yeah, well, we'll progressed take or where are we yeah. at with that? Um, I'll take a look at when that's due. It's probably coming up here yeah. this month. So thank you okay. for the uh, the nudge and the reminder on that. So um, yes, I'll definitely take a look at that. I'm, I Like I said, I think. We're probably coming up close on needing one of those. Yeah. So okay. I'll get that. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Okay, with that, we will adjourn at 632.